let's see. So you've got me on the thing there. Is there a way to turn that volume down? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so y'all can see me here and you see my screen, right? Oh, wait. Is this on Zoom also? Yeah, I didn't know yes, it was going to be on Zoom. Yes, you can see you. How do I do this? All right. Let's see if I can move this somewhere. I don't need to see it. I've got, I've got it right here. All right. So we're all ready, right? Somebody wave at me so I know we're ready. Okay. All right. Here we go. Oh, don't tell me this isn't going to work now. There we go. All right. So we're going to talk about social media and how to use social media to get more transactions. Um, this is kind of weird. I have this like feel like I should be looking two places. So that's a little strange. So I'm, I don't know how I'm gonna be able to listen to these people. So all y'all over there, you can raise your hand, but I, I don't know how to answer your question. Okay. Or if somebody has it on their computer here, if you can see that they have a question oh, sure. and I'll, I'll just tell me. You don't need to sit there the whole time. I just I still don't know how. All right. So, anyone have any ideas on why you'd want to use social media? He he he's he's doing it right now, so we don't have to worry about it. Okay. Well, you can leverage your leverage yourself globally, interspatially, physically. Yeah. I like it better when they're here because you get more into it. In top of anyway, mind. So somebody tell me why you'd want to use social media for leads. Because uh, you, it's a great way to be top of mind. Cheat. Cheat? And then what, I heard somebody over here. It's a great way to do something. Uh, to be top of mind. Top of mind, yep. Absolutely. So for me, the best thing about social media is it's 24 seven. It's working when you're not doing anything. Um, and it's free, or it can be free. You can also pay, do paid ads. I'm not gonna talk about paid ads in this. We're gonna talk specifically about how to attract business without spending money. My marketing budget is zero. Um, here's a little bit of, of my history with Facebook. Overall on Maui, I've done 50 units now since 2018. So about five years, about, average about 10 a year. 38 of those units have been through social media for free. No money spent on them or anything. In 2022, I did eight units. 2023, so far I've done five. I should have five more transactions in escrow by the beginning of July, all from social media. Now, the reason I put 2022 up here, for those of you that don't know, my 2022 sucked. Uh, started out with COVID in Texas hospitalized for eight days. Um, took me about a month and a half to recover enough to fly back to Maui. Fly back to Maui, uh, I had gone to Texas to kind of take care, help take care of my dad. He was in final stages of cancer. Came back for a few weeks, he took a really bad turn. I immediately went back and he passed away at the end of April. So I stayed there for another month or so, uh, kind of helping my mom get reorganized, get back to Maui. And then my now ex and I decided to get divorced. So I spent the second half of 2022 focusing on getting divorced, the first half not focusing on business. So I did eight deals from Facebook. I did 10 overall, but I did eight deals that they contacted me. I did nothing to contact them. I was not doing anything proactive. I wasn't sending out cards. I wasn't calling people. I wasn't doing anything. Those are people that contacted me and asked me to help them. And it's because of what I'm gonna show you on how I set up my social media to attract people. Now, that being said, if you've been to my Ninja classes, you already know that Ninja is about attracting versus pursuing. So all I really did is I took Ninja concepts, applied it to social media and had great results. 
The other book, and it's sitting right over here in this bookcase, is called The Social Agent 3.0 by a guy named Tony Giordano. And he's one of those people that if you've, we've all met these people, no matter what they do in business, it works, right? They just have that Midas touch. Everything they do just, you know, they just have that business mindset. Well, he wrote this book about how to use social media. So I kind of took stuff from him and stuff from Ninja Selling and combined them um, to basically create. And I don't want to say automatic because it's not like I, at specific times, get people contacting me. But I just had a conference call this morning with somebody that met me through Facebook and sent me. A, I didn't have, I don't think I had time to put it up here. But hey, I see you interacting with people. I really like how you do that. Do you have a few minutes to talk? So I talked to her today. When into selling, the concept is to be a proactive, trusted advisor. I'm going to show you exactly today how to do that in social media so that you are a proactive, trusted advisor that people know and like. Um, if you've been to Ninja, people value anything that solves a problem and eases pain or anything that makes them feel good and provides pleasure. So, you know, if you've been to a million trainings like I have, you know, you always hear this, well, great value. You know, do stuff for value, but you never really know what value is, right? You go, well, what does value mean? So we're going to cover that specifically, but it's going to fall into these two categories. Solves a problem or makes you happy. That's the two basic categories. So there's a book called The Go-Giver Book. If you haven't read it, it's really small. It's probably, I don't even know if it's 100 pages, but really quick read. And one of the things in that is the law of value. Your true worth is determined by how much more you give in value than you receive in payment. So what I think about that is if I'm if I'm Terry's agent and I provide like I help her make more money than she could have made with anyone else. Is she going to be happy to pay me my fee? Absolutely. Now, if if in that transaction, she feels like I get more out of it than she got out of it. Is she going to be happy with me? No. Is she going to refer me to anyone? No. So it's that's the whole point is to give more than you receive. Profit flows to those who create the most value. So as we talk about this, I want you to kind of be thinking in the back of your head, what is Don doing to create value? Because that's really all I do. I don't, and I kind of joke about it a lot, I don't do calls to action hardly ever. I just give and then people come towards me. Um, if, if you're in my ninja class, it starts out uh, showing Rocky, you know, the movie Rocky, the guy chasing a chicken. Rocky's chasing a chicken. And if you ever chase a chicken, it's so hard to catch, right? But the next video I show is this little kid that squats down and chicken runs up and hugs him. So who, what would you rather have your clients do? You chase them to find that one, you're exhausted by the time you get to them, and you're sweating, going crazy, or that one that comes up and hugs you. I like the ones that come up and hug me. So the cool thing about the way I've set up my business is everybody I work with has asked me to be their agent. So I don't go through this whole, you know, they had an objection class here earlier. I don't get a lot of objections because I've created a situation where they come to me. I had a mentor. I, I was in Amway out of college. And honestly, it was one of the best things I've ever done. Uh, I wouldn't do it right now, but it taught me how to learn, how to treat people how to act, how to get smarter, fantastic thing. One of my mentors from there said this, the size of the window that you give through is the size of the window that you receive through. So if you're given through a little bitty window, don't expect big things to come back at you, right? So throw open the window, give a lot, just keep pouring out there. And eventually it starts coming back uh, in more than you could have imagined. Elon Musk is not the first person who said this. But when I searched beams for the, the phrase I wanted, this was the best one. Like, it looked the best. Uh, but my mentor actually told me this before Elon was, you know, probably more than 10. I don't know how old he is now, but he was young. Uh, but you get paid in direct proportion to the size of the problems that you solve. So if real estate is super easy and you're not doing anything difficult, should you expect it to be easy and or expect to make a lot of money? Not really, you know, and if and I, I know people get upset when I do this, but if we paid somebody to sweep the floor here, is that that big of a problem? It's not really. So that person shouldn't really expect this living wage that we all argue about all the time. Right. And honestly, the, the problem they're solving is not a big enough problem that it 
affords them the income that they want. There are businesses that'll do that. It's great. But in real life, you're paying size in proportion to the size of the problem that you solve. Now, how exactly do we provide value? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Um, number one, I would say, is to actually be responsive in a timely it's manner. Definitely. And specifying what you're in, specializing in the mm -hmm. trade on that one thing. That can definitely provide value. What else? Creating relationships. Anything else? Giving. Giving, absolutely. Uh, thinking ahead of the process, like um, anticipating clients' questions and um, having it already answered for them. Mm -hmm. Yep, those are all examples of value. Um, so I'm looking more for a category, way to think about it, and it's art and science. So when you are posting things and when you are doing anything really, whether it's a phone call, mailers, emails, whatever, it really falls in one of these two categories, either art or science. Art is things that make you feel good. It's something that affects your heart. Um, science is something that solves a problem. So um, a way that we can think about that is those puppy videos or you know, soldier come homes videos. What, which one of those two categories is that? Art, right? It tugs at your heart. What about if I'm showing comps or some new development here on Maui? What is that? Art or science? It's science, right? So when you start thinking about what you're posting, figure out which one of those categories it fits in. And those are broad categories. So almost everything you post can fit in one of those. Uh, and by doing that, you're going to start attracting people versus pursuing. Um, do you find that... Um... Most of your posts that generate business are more on the art side? I don't, I, I wouldn't say that I have a post that produces business. I have so many posts yeah. that people are attracted to me because they realize that I'm someone that knows what I'm talking about and they, they trust me. And then after they go and stalk you, and we'll talk about that in a minute, they, they discover they actually like you too. And then, then they call you and ask you to be their agent because they already know and like you because they've been following you and they see what you post. So they trust you. Yeah. Right. No problem. So there are four basic personality types. If you have already done your disc profile, do you know what your disc profile is? You know, D I S C. So D is your power person. So the, the P letters up here are really the ninja version of disc. And I like them because they describe it really well. So a D person is, is a power person. That's somebody who wants to do it right now. Just give me the facts, let's go. I don't need all the information. I just need enough to go, right? We all know those people. And then there's party people, your eye people. Uh, I like to say if there were party hats here, they would already have them on at the beginning of class. They don't care what we're doing as long as it's fun. You know, they're, they're, they're just that type of person. They're the ones that when you go to any, any dance place, they're the first ones out on the worst song because they don't care, they just want to dance, right? And then you got the S people. Those are the peace people. Uh, that's what I am. And those are the people that are, that are the wallflower at all the bars with all the music going. And they got to be six to eight Mai Tais into it before they're even thinking about going out to the dance floor, right? And then you got your C people who are your perfection people. These are the people that have spreadsheets that tell you how to use spreadsheets, right? They've got Excel things with tabs and, you know, calculations that go from sheet to sheet and book to book. They're your perfection people. Now, out of those, you know which one you are. Who should you market to? All of them. You've probably been to come of my class already. <laughs> They've been doing this all month. But yeah, I mean, why would I limit myself to any of those? So I'm an S. S happens to be about 30, I think it's 30 to 40% of the population are S's. So if I only targeted S's, I'm missing out on 70, 60 to 70% of the people in the world. So why would I do that? That would, that would be foolish. So we're gonna focus with art and science on targeting everyone. That's why when you ask what, which post brings business, I don't have one that does because I target all these people with multiple posts. So some of them are, are posts that perfection people are gonna love. You know, it's super detailed about some property, CMAs, whatever. And then I've got some super fun ones that party people love, right? So not every post is going to hit every person. 
So you've got to kind of be a little bit broad in your market there. Now, there's all kinds of social media out there. I'm specifically going to talk about Facebook because that's what I use. However, the theme and what the method that I do is applicable in any of these. OK, so we're going to talk about them overall, but Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, Nextdoor. I'm sure there's other ones that I don't know about Snapchat and there's people that make money in all of those. Right. It's not just it's not like everybody's only making money in Facebook or everybody's using YouTube and that's the only way they can get business or Instagram or whatever. So when I'm talking about this, figure out the ones that you like and use those to build your business. Uh, one of the things that Tony Giordano says is the reason that you're doing social media is because that's where people are now. You know, 20 years ago, we could all attest to it because I can see we're all Don's age or so. We had to go somewhere to meet people, right? They weren't just in your phone. You know, you couldn't just see the world in your palm. You had to actually go somewhere to meet people. So now we have the ability to do that. So like I said, pick the ones that fit your personality style. Like, like if uh, which one would an I probably really like of these social medias? Instagram. Instagram. What else? One in particular I think eyes would love. TikTok. TikTok? Oh, you mean the one where I get to dance and do videos? No. Yeah, that's what that's what an I would probably choose, right? Because they get to party. Yeah. Singing skits, you can do all the goofy stuff, right? So if you're if you're an I, you'd probably love TikTok. So you can apply what I'm talking about to TikTok. Now, just got to worry about the Chinese, like getting all your data, right? Because you're using TikTok. But you know, whatever. Every platform has their own version of that. Yeah, yeah. So, and and I'll show you here. We're going to get into Facebook here specifically in a second, but I'll show you how you can set up the, any social media to attract people. Um, so we're going to attract again, we're going to create value with art and science. And like we talked about, the big benefit of this it happens 24 seven, like, um, was it Wednesday or yeah, Wednesday was Lahaina noon. Do y'all know what Lahaina noon is? I've got 2.1 thousand views on that in a day and a half. And all I did was upload a quick little video talking about Lahaina Noon, showing my shadow underneath my feet and all that stuff. And it's already going out. I don't even know what it is now. It might be even more than that now. But this morning it was at 2.1 thousand. On which social Simple. media? You saw it. Matter of fact, I was getting my haircut yesterday. My haircut guy goes, oh, I saw your video. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's funny. But it's going out 24 hours a day. And I didn't spend any money on it. So that's the power of social media. So, I'm not a TikTok guy. I didn't dance in it, right? You didn't see me dancing, just talking. But anyway, so this is Tony Giordano. These are the five most important posts you can do. So if you're gonna take a picture, take notes, these are the top five. And it's in order according to Tony Giordano. So heartfelt are your puppies, soldiers, cancer. The ones that I like the most are the guys that uh, are colorblind and they get the glasses so they can see color for the first time. That one just kills me every time. Um, then there are funny ones, of course. We've all seen those. I don't know how some of these people survive that trip and fall and run into things. It's just like, God, I don't know how these people are surviving, but they're funny. Interest. Interest is important. Interest is what you like. So you can post things that you don't like. Like, I don't really like scuba diving. Not my thing. Right. I got certified the whole time. I was just looking behind me for that big tiger shark that I knew was coming. So it wasn't my thing. So I haven't done it since I got certified. Yes, sir. On the video parts that you're posting, do you have an uh, internal uh, number of seconds that you like? Just whatever it is. Just whatever. I mean, there are people that say it needs to be under 30 seconds, or people say, you know, long form like Joe Rogan's podcast yeah. is better. The, the most important thing is you're just putting stuff out there. Yeah. Um, but back to interest, it's things that you like, because part of what you're doing by showing things like I like golf. So I'll do posts about golf, you know, play, play Kapalua today, play Kanapali today. I sucked. It was terrible. It was great. You know, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Take pictures and or video. And it's showing you enjoying life. And that's part of what people, when they stalk you, 
start, oh, he likes golf too. Oh, he likes hanging out on the beach too. So they start to be connected with you. So you're posting on both your personal page. And, and we'll cover that in just a second. Okay. Well, and we'll do specifically how you do that. One other question. Do you have a, 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 I, I can't call it, but do you have a ratio of like a still factual versus video? Okay. No. no. Um, just on social media, social media loves video. Yeah. So if I had to choose between the two, I'd say video. Okay. But you know, you're not always in a video mood. Sure. But you can post pictures all the time, and we'll we'll cover that a little bit here in a second. Value is the ninja values that we're talking about: art and science, educational articles, videos. Um, I'll do this in just a second too, but my Lahaina Noon video, I talked about how what Lahaina Noon is, how the sun passes north of us for a couple months, goes back, you know, rotation of the earth, all that stuff. So it's kind of educational. But there are tons of articles that you can get from social media to share on social media that have all kinds of educational things in them. And it, it doesn't necessarily have to be just real estate educational. It could be anything. Like there's, I, I can't remember his name. There's some guy in Hawaii and he posts these great articles about Hawaiian history and it goes really in depth and it covers everything you can imagine. I mean, all the islands, but really good stuff. So when I see him post something, I almost always share it because anyone that loves Hawaii wants to read that, you know, because it's just interesting to learn about the place that you love. So on social media, remember, no matter what type of social media it is, you really want to have two places on social media, your personal place and your business place. And I want to cover exactly why here in just a second. But I know you can do this on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, I don't really know about TikTok or whatever. I would assume that you can do that. But there's a reason to keep them separated. And I'll show you that here in just a second. Yes, ma'am. So I have uh, is this based on attached to my account? Can mm -hmm. I become an admin on there and like show mm -hmm. on his? I believe so. I'm not 100% sure. But I, so what's funny is I'm actually not a social media expert per se on how it all works and whatever. Right. I just know how to use it. So uh, I think you can, but I'm not 100% sure. So on your personal page, this is all about you. This is your hobbies and your likes, not your dislikes. This is not a place to rant about whatever you don't like, right? Because when you do that, you're alienating half the people. You know, I do what? This. <laughs> well, there was another agent that had another personal page, and it was vile. I, I saw some of the stuff he was posting, and I was just like, good God. Um, so, Kayla, what... Uh, what was your question to on which social media platform? Yeah, which social media platform did I can't you hear you? Uh, okay, you're muted right now. Try, try one more time. I couldn't hear you. Yeah, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yeah, which social media platform did you post the Lahaina Noon? Um, Facebook. I pretty much only use Facebook. I do use YouTube also. And I do have an Instagram, but I'm terrible at Instagram. And I don't really post, I post walkthrough videos on YouTube, but really haven't got into a lot of the stuff I want to do. Like if you want to look at a good YouTube page, go to Eric West's YouTube page. He's really, really good at YouTube. What uh, Eric West, yeah, he's, he's a KW agent. His YouTube is fantastic. I don't know if he does the videos or if he, He's got a kid that knows how to do the videos or something, but they're really good. So number three, opinionated versus neutral. Yeah. That? Yes, that's what I'm getting ready to talk about. So when you're posting, don't be opinionated. You know, I post stuff about Maui and I just post the information. I don't say if I think it's good or bad, and that's not true. There's some things I say good or bad, but I do not get into political things. You know, if if you love Joe Biden, and I post stuff about Trump, what is that person gonna do? Immediately turn me off, right? Yeah. So I wanna, I, and I do, I like helping everybody. I don't care what they are, who they are, their pronouns, whatever. I wanna help them, right? Cause that makes me feel good. And that's why I do it. So 
don't be opinionated because you're immediately going to disassociate half the people in the world from you, no matter what the topic is, right? Um, your personal page is not real estate focused at all. I've got on here 9010 personal post, a business post. About the only business post I do is like if I have a just sold or something, I'll most of the time share the just sold from my business page to my personal page. So people can see that, but everything else is just personal, just jokes, things I like, you know, funny things, whatever. Um, now you can be sneaky. One of the things that I do pretty much every week is uh, when we're on caravan and I, I'm, you know, you're upside of uh, Kapalua or somewhere, and you've got an incredible view. I'll take a quick video and go, oh my God, this view is incredible. I'm out of my realtor's caravan and I just thought you'd like to see this. And then I'll talk about Molokai and Lanai or whatever. So they heard me say I'm in real estate, but I didn't say, who do you know is looking to buy or sell real estate? Almost like another travel agent. It is. That's why I put sneaky. Yeah. You know, I'm just being sneaky. And that's on my personal page, right? Okay. So on my business page, is my thing not going? Oh, I think I clicked off. There we go. Oh, well, let me back up. But what's the reason for your personal page? Become someone that people know and like. Yeah, because I know none of us stalk other people. <laughs> but you see somebody and you go click on their personal stuff to see if you like them. And hopefully it was all good, right? Yeah. 2200, yeah. Yeah, I actually, I texted my mom yesterday at about three or four. I said, oh my God, it's got 1.1. And then literally like an hour later, it was 1.3. And then another hour or two later is like 1.5. Oh my God. You don't concern yourself with the number of views or anything No, because I just get through a big window yeah. and then it comes back to me. All right. So your business page is all about your business, whether it's a Facebook page, a YouTube page, an Instagram, because I've got personal and a business Instagram too. It's all about your business. So you add value on that page through art and science. Right. So I'm going to post, you know, that's where I post my monthly uh, market reports, you know, that we get from title companies or RAM or whatever. Uh, any articles about new properties come not not like an individual property, but new developments. You know, is there something about um, water on the west side or erosion or whatever? I'll post all that stuff in there as science. Then I also post a lot of. Uh, things that are art, you know, restaurants. Who, I mean, who do you talk to coming to Maui that doesn't say, hey, what restaurant should I go to? Where's the off the beaten path one that no one goes to? Well, there's not any because everybody knows about them. That's why, you know, they're famous. But anyway, so you're going to add on your business page art and science to add value. Um, you're going to put your pics and videos of your successes. So you are going to put all of your just sold under contracts, your accolades, you know, hey, I just capped, you know, all those things. You're gonna put those on your business page because this is where people are gonna go to find out if you're credible, right? This is where we're gonna go find out if you can be trusted. Um, now you can't be sneaky. Remember, just like we were sneaky on our personal page and talking about business a little bit, on our business page, we can say, hey, I was gonna go put a sign in a yard. I took my dog with me and he was so funny. Look what he did. You know, so you're showing them some of your personal side, but you're doing it in your business page. Okay, so you'd say you want to put a sign in the yard also. Yeah. I killed two birds with one stone to drug my dog with me. Yeah. Like or, you know, I, I took, the, I'm training up my kid and, had, and you show the yeah. career trying to put a sign in the yard. Yeah. So you're showing, you're showing the people who are only looking at your business page that you have some personal personality too. Just like on your personal page, you're showing your personal, but you're also showing that you do a little bit of business, right? Yeah. So the switch now is just internal to you, where it says switch now. I mean, switch now. Oh, here? Yeah. Well, this is an example of my business page. But I mean, it doesn't, well, customer here switch now. That, that's what I see on mine, okay. but you on the other side don't see that. And you keep your business page public. And my private and my personal page. Personal you well, you know, if my personal page is all locked up, how are they going to get to know and like me? Right. 
So there are bad things about, about social media. Like I don't really like having all my business out there, but that's how I, I don't make sure there's no brokers here. They would get so mad at me because I do zero cold call or zero calling. I don't do any lead gen. I don't do any of that stuff. I work probably the least of any agent in here at the volume that I do. Does your personal, uh, on your personal one where it says patients, you put a little on there? Oh, yeah. Because my personal right now is the dishwasher. Yeah. 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 Which is the exact name that I have on my business page. Okay. Right there. Realtor salesperson, Keller Williams Realty Maui. Now, I'm not telling you you have to do this, but if you've gone through the, uh, what is that called? The A and B stuff that we have to do every two years. Uh, course. Well, yeah, core stuff. So, you know, there's always some lawyer that teaches that, right? And one of the things that they say is you really need to have all this stuff on here because you don't want anyone to misunderstand your position with the company. Like, uh, if you come to my page, you automatically know what Keller Williams Realty Maui. I got Keller Williams crap all over it. So you would never, a reasonable person couldn't think that I'm my own broker, right? Even if I had a broker's license, I got Keller Williams all over everything. So I would suggest that you do that. Chemo Stone, I think that's the guy that does it. He's the one that recommended this. So I just immediately did it. Cause I'm like, I just, I don't, you know, I think you'd have to be an idiot to sue somebody for something like that, but I don't, I know there's idiots out yeah. there, right? So I just don't want to mess with that. <laughs> but what are some, some examples of art? Pictures of rainbows, clouds. So there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's, it's literally almost endless. Area, area activities, sports, great picks, town parties, events, local businesses, drive-through videos. Like if you're not sharing every town party there is, like I know they're not all back up and running like they were before COVID, right? But if you're not sharing those every month, why not? If somebody's visiting the island and they're finding out about you and then you give them to, hey, go to the Kihei town party Would that be this Friday. Or your, uh, like, you can do it in either. either. Yeah, I mean, okay. and a lot of times I'll do... I shouldn't say a lot of times for things like that. I'll, I'll no, I'll post it on my business page, and for my business page, I'll share it to my personal page. Okay. So I'm sneaky. People are seeing Don Harris Realtor, but Don Harris Realtor isn't talking about real estate. Sly little coyote guy, right? <laughs> All right, we got science, sales statistics, great deals. Like, how many times have you seen a house? I, I mean. I have almost a script. I don't really believe in scripts. I have almost a script when people ask about a deal. Well, I want a deal. Okay, well, you know, everyone wants a deal in Maui, so they don't happen because the market knows they can get a high price. So it's unlikely you're going to find a deal. But when you do find a deal, post it. Hey, this is unusual. This, I don't know wh where, why they're priced this way, but everything I looked at looked good. This is a great deal. You know, let me know if you need more information about it. That's about as call to action as I'll get, something like that. But investor information, stuff about schools, locations, restaurants, all that kind of stuff, things that people would want to know if they were going to live here. You know, how far is it to Costco? You know, when is Costco open? All just different things like that that they might want to know. And that's on business. Yeah, I mean, you could do that on either. You can do that on either. I don't know. I mean, depending on what it is, yeah. you can share it. You just don't want to share all the time to your personal right. page because you, yeah, exactly. Because personal is where they know and like you. Business is where they learn to trust you. So all this stuff about Maui, you really want on your business page because that's where they're going to go, oh, he's not just a part-time realtor here and he knows what he's talking about. So your business page purpose is to become a trusted advisor. Okay. So... What is this picture of? Art. 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 So I took all these pictures with my phone and they look fantastic, don't they? They do. All your pictures can look just like this and they do look just like this. You know, you may have to get better at learning how to set up a picture, 
Terry, <laughs> I've been kind of giving her tips on caravan and stuff just the other day. But you have the ability with your phone to do all of this. I mean, it's not hard. Just look around and take pictures. I mean, we got. I'm sure there are a lot of places in the world that have great pictures that you can take. I don't know any place that's got them all day, every day, like here. I mean, almost every day is perfect, right? So, oh, it's exactly why. So just go start, start taking pictures and you can post them. Matter of fact, well, anyway, but just all these pictures, these are all things that we took or I took. And it, you know, it's just easy to do. So this is an example of science. From RAM, I pulled up, you know, I, I basically copied their chart, posted on my business page. Um, here's an article from Maui News. And I just shared a Maui News article about a new development coming up. So how much did this cost me to get this article? Zero. How long did it take me to share it? About five seconds. Now, how powerful is it for someone looking on my, my business page? Does that create credibility for me? Yes. Yeah, and I really didn't do anything. I may not even read it. You know, I did because I'm a good realtor. But, you know, in essence, I could have my whole Facebook loaded up and uh, it looks like I know everything, and I, you know, I do because I'm a good realtor. But, you know, point being, the whole point is to be to create a page where people uh, become learn how to trust you. So this is on Facebook specific. But again, I know on Instagram you can do what I'm going to talk about. I don't know if you can link these as easy on, on YouTube. I know on YouTube you can do channels. I'm not an expert on YouTube yet. So, but point is create your personal profile. From your personal profile, create your business page. And there's a little button that says, do you want to create a business page? You just click it and it walks you through how to set it up. So after you've done your business page, you want to link your business page to all your other social media. Now, you may not have all your other social media now, so that's okay. But as you add an Instagram or a YouTube, put the link on your business page so that when they go to your business page, they go, oh, he's got a YouTube channel, click. Because if they like your YouTube channel, then anytime you put up a new YouTube, it all, they get a notification that way too, right? So the whole purpose is to attract people to you. Uh -huh. uh, when you say the personal profile, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so do your personal page first, then after you've created your personal page, you create the business page off of that, and there'll be a little button that says, I, I can't remember exactly what it says, because I did this six years ago, five years ago, whatever it was, mm -hmm. but it, it'll say like create a business page or something along that line. Thanks, so. All right, so after you've done that, link to your KW website, or if you use a different company to do your personal website, Link it to that. Um, and it's not because you want them to search on your website. That'd be great. But Tony Giordano, one of the things he says is don't try to fight people and make them stop looking on Zillow, Redfin, and Trulia because they like it. They like realtor.com. It's easy to use. It's friendly looking. People are going to use it. So your goal with your own website is not to get them to search on your website. Some of them do because I do get leads from there who are obviously people that found it through my social media because you know it's not like you're going to be searching hey looking looking for a maui real estate web page search and it pops up don harris maui.com it's not it just isn't going to do that right so link it to your website because in part and build out that website if you if you're using the kw website you can add pages we've got scott Leroy marketing on four or five mornings a week going over how to do all this stuff. You can actually even, I think, get them to do some of it, but you want your website to have multiple tabs. I don't have mine pulled up. Mine's Don Harris Maui, if you want to go look at mine. And it, you don't have to have all the things I have on mine, but you're building out enough so that you're starting to build some credibility there too. Because we're just wanting to teach people how to trust us. So when they go there, if you've got a search page and a Don Page. Are they going to think that you're a legit realtor? No, because it's like the most basic website of all. So put stuff on there because it just creates an air of credibility. So if 
Um, if when you get your daily emails, at, it's usually at like 7 a.m. in the morning. There's almost always a Scott Leroy training. So just look on that daily email and you can look. So what I and I just redid all these just a few weeks ago, like maybe maybe a month or two ago. I went through them all again as they came out every day, just as a refresher. But you can look ahead for the next two weeks and see, oh, here's one on how to create my website. So then you can kind of make sure that you listen to that one. So again, we're providing value by solving a problem and easing pain, making them feel good, and bringing them pleasure. It's very simple. We do that through art and science, right? So here's some examples of art and science. Um, this is a balloon. Do people like balloon pies? So they're going to love just read about the little pie and how, so, and how much that cost me? Nine. So from Hawaii Magazine. So they did an article on Will Pie and I have a share, right? Same thing, you know, pictures. So uh -huh. go ahead. No. So that would be business? That no, would be this is art and science that I can put all over my business pages. Okay. And I mean, I can still put this stuff on my personal pages too. You know, I'm interested in uh, Hula Pie, <laughs> obviously. Got to get rid of the Hula Pie right now. But, you know, and then, Old Republic and all these all these title companies put out monthly charts. Just copy and paste and put them in your business and say, hey, latest latest Maui stats. You can go through and describe it if you want to and talk about it. But honestly, people are going to look at that. They make these charts so easy. Oh, units were down or days on market were down. I can't read it sideways here. Volume was up. And this is from 2020, 2021. But point being, you've got tons of free resources to pull information from and share it easily. There are also newsletters that you can get. Almost every news channel, newspaper, community group, almost every one of them has some sort of email newsletter that they'll send out that you can sign up for. Now, I know we all hate getting emails. You know, sometimes you get overloaded, but these are ones that are specific to Maui or Hawaii or things that would be of interest to you and people that are looking at your stuff, right? Because anything, people on the mainland, anything about Hawaii, they're excited about, right? I mean, pretty much anything. It can be about some fish on Lanai that's only there for six months a year. And I don't even know if there's one that does that, but they're going to read about it because like, oh my God, I love Hawaii. There's this one fish on Lanai. Did you know there's a fish on Lanai? And they're going to start talking about all that stuff, right? So we're going to do that. We're going to look for uh, newsletters, but you can share posts from all these sources, other posts, other people. Like I wouldn't share another realtor's post, right? Because I want them directed to me. But if they, if another realtor shared a post that was good from Maui Now or something, I'll share the Maui Now post on my page if I like that one. You can share from your personal page. You know, again, you find something that you liked of interest to you that would be interested, that would interest people from the mainland or wherever about Maui, share it from your personal page over. You can share from your business page. You can share newsletters. And one of the things that you can do when we talk about leveraging time is you can actually schedule these out. This is an example. Each one of those were posts that I scheduled out into the future. You can get these newsletters and maybe they got five good articles. Do I want to post five good articles all at one time? No. I want to schedule them out, whether it's scheduled out through the day or through the week. So with your business page, you want multiple posts. So when people look, they don't go, oh, he posted on April 1st and he posted on January 1st. And he posted on September 30th. You know, I got hardly any posts. But if I can go ahead and schedule these out, so they automatically come out no matter what I do, there's more likelihood, one, that people are going to see them. But I'm also going to build up my page so it, it appears to be knowledgeable, someone that's trustworthy. I post all about everything. Did you have a question? No, oh, you kind of had a question look on you. Is there a pure time of day that you can post work there? If, if you, there is actually, so on your, this is Facebook specific. Okay, so I don't know if, the, if these other things have it, but Facebook specific on your business page, there's a 
thing called Meta or Professional Dashboard or something like that. And you can pull it up and it will tell you when people are most active. Now, I don't look at that. I post several things like throughout the day so that no matter when somebody gets on, there should be a pretty recent post of mine that pops up. So, you know, if I was only posting once a day or once a week, I would go by that Facebook suggestion. You know, Thursdays at two are the best time to post. Well, great. What do I do the rest of the week? You know, so I just post a bunch. And and going back to what I was talking about earlier, you know, you're supposed to wake up and do phone calls for three hours a day or whatever. I wake up. I go through my emails, I go through my posts. I spend probably 15 to 30 minutes setting up my posts for the day. And if I've got too many for the day, I'll bleed them over the next day or the weekend. Like I do a lot of art posts on the weekend. So when people are off work and they're just sitting at home doing whatever they're doing on the mainland, a thing will pop up about the huma huma nuku nuku afua, right? Oh my God, do you leave the fish on my head? So, you know, Think about it and schedule it when you think people would be most interested in it. It's kind of what we're talking about, be consistent. If you've been in the ninja class, one of the things we talked about was this mastery sheet that you have to, that you should read every day, at least for a month or two. And one of the phrases in that really caught me. It said, you see, we are all ordinary, but a master, rather than condemning himself for his ordinariness, will embrace it and use it as a foundation to build the extraordinary. So I, I got out of that, and this is my quote. To be, so that means to be extraordinary, you must master and consistently complete the ordinary. So is there anything that I've shown you all so far that's too hard for you to do? It's all very ordinary. I just do it a lot. So I've mastered the ordinary of doing that. And as a result, I'll probably have 10 escrows by early July this year. I'm kind of happy with that, right? Yeah. So doing this, you'll also become an expert. You know, we're talking about being someone that, you, that people know, like, and trust, right? So by posting all this, they perceive you as an expert, right? Um, and once that happens, you become a celebrity. And it's true. I was having lunch with my daughter. She was here visiting, and I don't remember what restaurant we're in, but it was off of Front Street, sitting by the water. These people walk by and go, are you doing this? My daughter goes, who the hell is this? And they're like, oh, we see all of this. They're just going crazy because they thought I was a celebrity. Yeah, I mean, think about it. The people that you follow, wow. if you saw them in real life, you go, oh my God, it's whoever. It's just natural. So that happens. And then when you're talking to people on the phone, I've had multiple people go, I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity, like literally say that sentence. I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity, like just a dude. Just happy with such media. Um, so on my business page, I think I have a thousand. So I don't have that many. Well, that's that's not that many. I get views. And like that video I just did, it's now at 2.2 or whatever it's at. That's way more people. And that's, I don't even know how, where in the world that's gone to. But I've talked to, because of social media, I've talked to people in Germany, England, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. Um, I've communicated with somebody in Japan, but fortunately we didn't talk, thank God. I didn't know if I could handle that. But I would have never met those people. I wouldn't have met people from Texas, California, Washington, any of these other places without social media, right? So it reaches so much further out than you could actually reach. Um, here's my thing. You don't always need to call to action. That's Don's personal pet peeve. When somebody does that to me, I immediately don't want to talk to them ever again. If somebody comes up and I know that we've talked, we've forwarded, that you uh, we're not going to do and at the end they go, oh, by the way, if you have something about yourself, it's they need to just move on to everything to talk about. Right? right? Because now they know, he's not just talking to me. You know, well, if they ask me about real estate, I will tell them everything that they need to know. But I don't ask for business that way. You can, people do it and it's effective. But the people that do it, in my opinion, you look at that's the realtor, Don, not that's Don, who happens to be a realtor. 
So who do you want to be? So you, you don't wear a name tag around too much. I, you know, I took mine off years ago. Yeah. And you know, and you, you have those people. Well, I wear my name tag upside down. So people say, hey, your name tag is upside down. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that's right. It's a great way to support with them. I'll tell you something. This morning, so part of my morning routine, I think we were talking about it this last time at Ninja, is to walk two to four miles every day. That's part of my morning routine. And it depends on what I have to do that day, whether it's two miles, three miles, or four miles. So this morning, I did a four-mile walk, and I'm on my way back, and I'm on Front Street. Um, you're familiar with where the highway wise and front street starts on the north end of Lahaina. Yeah, yeah, that old restaurant that's now a church. It's actually being sold in, by the way. Um, so I'm I'm walking down that street, and this group of people must have been 12 to 15 people walk out of this house. It's right on the water, obviously a, a VRBO or Airbnb or whatever, and they're all getting ready. They're all getting ready to walk and. There's a mom that's probably in her 50s or 60s and kids that range from probably 18 to 30 and a grandkid or two. And they're all getting ready. And they go, oh, so where are y'all? And I go, man, that's a big group. And they all look at like, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so where are y'all going? She goes, oh, we're just going to go for a walk. Is that like, where are you walking? Goes, oh, we're going to go down that way, pointed down to Front Street. And, you know, I live right there. So I'm like, well, if you go that way, you get to walk along the water. You know, it'd be incredible views. Okay, they were going to go down my way. Well, no, they were going to go down Front Street, but I was like, you know, there's this little section that you go, but then you get into uh, Post Office Park, oh, right. and you know, you got all this. You got a mile or two, probably two miles, that goes all the way to Kanapali, and if you really want a long walk, you can go all the way to Black Rock. So I'm telling them about this and uh, talking for a little bit. So I was doing what? Forwarding. Where are y'all from? What are you doing? How do you uh, did you just get here, or how long have you been here? It's his first time in Maui. Now, I don't care about getting business out of everyone, so I didn't ask him for their number. I didn't tell them that I'm gone on social media or anything like that because I just like putting good out in the earth, right? So I got a big window. I'm just giving through the window. So, uh, of course, I haven't talked to them since they did their walk, but I guarantee it would have been a lot better than walking down Front Street past all the homeless guys that were sleeping right? That view versus that view. So, yes, yeah. So, ultimately, people don't know how much you care until they care how much you know. And I don't know if Theodore Roosevelt actually said this either. (laughs) I had a mentor that told me about this. And actually, when I Googled this, it came up with like five different people that supposedly said this. So, I don't know who said it, but the point is good. I, actually, Zig Ziglar is the one I heard originally at said this. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. All right, we're almost done. Um, when you post something, interact with people. If somebody asks you a question, answer it. If they say anything, like it. You know, unless it's something that's a jerk statement, right? And if anybody does anything that's that's horrible, like says something bad, like I heard earlier in the class before I was doing this, there were, somebody was talking about how they had a post and people were being super negative. You're the reason why prices are so high, blah, blah, blah. Delete. Just delete it. I don't care. You can delete the comment. Depending on what they said, I have blocked people, but it, you know, I'm, no, no. And I'm, I'm an overly accepting person. So, two or three times they say stuff like that, then I'll delete them. I usually don't delete people immediately unless it's a super a-hole comment, you know? Um, But point being, interact. Because when you post something on somebody on social media's page that you see as a celebrity and they comment on yours or they like yours, how do you feel? Oh my God, I can't believe they read my comment, (laughs) right? So that's a way that attracts people. Um, During COVID, remember, when it first started, you weren't allowed out of your house or condo unless you were getting medical care, food, or had an essential job or exercising. So for an hour a day, we got out of lockup and we walked down Baby Beach. And you couldn't stop and sit on Baby Beach because you'd obviously give COVID to everybody if you sat down on Baby Beach, right? <laughs> so as we're walking, we're looking down and at the Baby Beach, there's always some glass there. You know, and it's even not harmful, but there's glass there. 
that's where the truth lies. And you're just starting to have to at the end of the wall, that's just kind of a huge change of glass. So ultimately, we decided to set up a glass cleanup after you were allowed to go to the beach and congregate with people because you weren't going to die from the COVID. Um, and so what we did is we set up an event. I'm doing a glass cleanup. I showed them where to meet. It went so well. So I said, hey, have you thought about doing another one? They're like asking me to do another one. Wow. How powerful is that? Yeah. How much did this cost me? Yeah. Zero. So here's the first group that we did it with. They ended up being KW agents for a little while. I sold them a place. Um, I helped them find a place, but they, it was a place like a, what is that place called? I can't remember the place, but it was one of the affordable housing things that was it paying agents. I can't remember who it was. I can't remember which one it was, but anyway, but all these people love them. I mean, they're all showing their glass and all the things they picked up. Yes, yeah, those, those, that couple that you help, help them get into a place, they are going to do referrals. Oh, absolutely. I just talked to her just a couple days ago about something else. And she was just, yeah. I mean, they're, they're friends of ours now, right? Yeah. And it was because we created an event to go do something good for Maui, Malamaka Aina, right? Um, you know, we're building relationship. There's a picture here. You know, one of the problems with living on Maui is you're so far away from family. So holidays and stuff can be, you know, upsetting for some people. So this is Christmas morning at the old plantation inn, you know, by the banyan tree. Now it's super ridiculous and crazy. But we're just like, hey, if you're here, you don't have family, just go meet us for breakfast. So we met for breakfast and, you know, this lady right here, that I, I have people from my social media that share my stuff that I've never talked to. The craziest thing. There's, I've got like three people specifically. Almost everything I post, they'll share it to their personal page. Never talked to them, never helped them with anything, but they follow my social media. They know, like, and trust me, and they forward stuff. She's one of one of the people that does that. That was Halloween. Hey, let's get together on Front Street for Halloween. You know, a little happy hour. This one, uh, I was at an HOA meeting, AOAO meetings specifically. Uh, for my client, I had a listing and they were having an AOAO meeting and I went to see what they were going to say. She was off island. And these people all recognized me from social media and went, oh my God, it's Dawn. And they're like, can you take a picture with us? Like literally. I'm like, yeah, do you need me to sign that? No, I didn't say that, but you know. But point being, when you start doing this, people will recognize you. And I do, I get recognized going down the street. Tammy always used to say, well, it's because you're eight feet tall. You know, you're hard to miss. Maybe so. I just feel I'm so good looking. No. <laughs> I don't know why. But point being, when you start doing this, you'll build those relationships and people will start being attracted to you. Now, I just pulled this off my business page a couple of weeks ago when I was getting ready to start this. So in one month, 28 days, my post that month reached 3,126 people. 1,420 engaged. So let's say that I'm an awesome agent and I contact my 50 people a week doing all the stuff I'm supposed to do. How many people did I talk to in a month? How many people did I connect with? 200. So I beat that by seven times without doing anything. Now, is the talking to someone a better contact than me? Absolutely. But if I'm interacting with them, right, that's similar to me texting with them. So that makes them feel good, right? On that 28 days, uh, when you reached uh, 3,000, mm -hmm. 3,126, how many posts do you think you posted in that 28 days? I probably posted 25, 30, 25 to 40. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't I don't really have a specific number yeah. that I try to post. It depends on when I see an article that's good or find something. But you post daily. Pretty much daily. Now I'm not gonna say for sure every day. Okay. But I would say I would be shocked if I didn't post more than seven times in a week. And, and I saw on your your <laughs> scheduled out that out of the week that it showed, yeah. one day you had three posts. Yeah. And one day I had zero. Yeah. I don't know. No yeah. Way. It's just whenever you find an article, yeah. share it. Something that's applicable. And you want to split that up like <laughs> article here, 
part here, science here. You just want to do some of everything. You want to have three it's, yeah. Well, it's not, no. I mean, you can. I mean, the whole point is you just want to put stuff out there because you're building your page, basically. So, I mean, you know how it is. Somebody, somebody will like something of yours that's from like two years ago and go, stalker. Yeah. Right. I want people to do that. Right. So they're going down my page like, oh, my God, this guy has so much good information. You know, every every. Oh, my God. Here's another great article like psycho, you know, over like three years ago and years, but whatever. And what are you finding for uh, history, like the amount of time that you've been posting to the time you get a client or the time they follow you? I've had. Good question. Have to be my next slide. So, hi Don. My this so March fourth, twenty twenty three. Hi Don. My significant other and I are in need of a real estate agent ASAP. We found a place and we would like to put an offer on it. Would you be able to chat soon? Left the message here in my number. So, I happened to be in Nashville at the time, I believe. Got this. Contact her. Did a Zoom. We were in escrow about three days later and closed in twenty five days. This next one right here. Hi, Don, thanks for your help with all the information. My family and I want a vacation property, blah, 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 blah. Here's what we're looking for, blah, blah, blah. I think it was 800 and something thousand. I can't remember how much you want to spend. But goes here, hey, help me. Will you help me? I want to, this, this is what I want exactly, help me. Another one, this one was from, uh, actually, this is the lady I talked to today. Hey, Don, I see your posts often. I love to help you offer people. Nice. So does that mean I'm providing value? Yes. Absolutely. So do you have time to connect maybe later this week? I have a few questions. So I just talked to her this morning. This, so this was, no, I didn't have the date on it. But this was just like last week because we played phone tag a little bit. Hi, Don. I saw you on the Maui Bound Facebook page. Maui Bound. That's not my page. Right. Um, I've been to Maui a few times in the very stage, early stages of looking at a second home. I was hoping you could help me. Blah, 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 up to 1.5 million. Huh. Will you help me? Please, God, help me. Yeah. This is one from this year, too. March 14, 2023. Uh, hello, I've been following you on Facebook and Instagram for a couple of years. So some of those other ones happened faster. This one was a couple of years. But how much had I interacted with this lady before this? Yeah. Zero. Um, I've been following you, and now I'm finally able to make a move to Maui. I'm currently living in Washington and just sold my house at the closing date of April 14th. I'm looking to be on Maui by July 1st. Looking forward to hearing from you. So this is almost like a reverse trip program. Huh? It's exactly that, because I'm attracting people. Yeah. I don't, like I I don't really talk about this much. I probably work less than everybody in here at my volume level. <laughs> Guarantee it, because yeah. I don't have to do the like I don't want to call names but big agents here you know they do a lot of referrals but they also have to send out a lot of postcards to get business you know they're spending money to get business and proactive I don't do that now granted they're making more than I am sure but they might have been here 20 years well, give me another sure. give me another 15 exactly I play golf I hang out at my house I go to the beach I do what I want to do because part of being a ninja is doing what you want to do so well, again, the whole point is become a proactive trusted advisor. You got a business page and a personal page. Business page is where you, people learn to trust you. Uh, personal page is where they learn to know and like you. So we're doing all this virtually because that's where people are. All we're doing is providing value. Um, so we're really kind of done, but let me point these out. If I haven't talked to you about these before, these are super important. Did you know you can schedule your emails in Gmail? So let's say that I'm communicating with somebody at seven o'clock at night and I just don't want to do it anymore. I can get their last email, write it out at the bottom of the Gmail that, where it says send. There's a little drop down arrow. I can push the arrow and I can schedule it for tomorrow morning at eight or eight thirty uh, if I want to. Yeah, it, it depends. I mean, if, if I really don't want to work it anymore, I don't. But, you know, you can do that in the future. So you could schedule. Like I'll give you an example. I've got scheduled text. If you have an Android, you can schedule text. So my haircut guy that saw my video <laughs> the other day, a couple a year or two ago, 
he was doing jujitsu. Actually, it was had to be 2020 because it was right when COVID hit. So he was doing jujitsu, and he had a tournament coming up, and um, it was several months away. I don't remember. It was like in August, but he told me when it was. And so after I left the haircut that day, like in March or whatever month it was, I scheduled a text to go out on the day of his tournament. So it, I forget about it, of course, but it's already set up. It goes out and he contacts me back, replies like, oh my God, I can't believe you remembered. Thank you so much, blah, 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 blah. So how powerful was that, right? Is that value? I made him feel good, right? So I provided value. So I use technology to do that. And I do that all the time. When I'm dealing with clients, if I don't, if I found a great deal for them or whatever, I will schedule it tomorrow so I don't have to talk today. That's how I control my time so yeah. I can go play golf. Just, 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 just do it. Just super powerful. Someone told me to tell you something. Like, oh, I need to you know, schedule. Schedule, whatever. Do yeah. you know if you can schedule texts on your iPhone? I think there is an app you have to get to do it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, someday Apple will be as good as Android. <laughs> someday. I'm just teasing about that. But, and then prepare replies, you know, in Facebook and like on your, on your phone, you sh everybody should be able to do this. If somebody calls, you can have a prepared reply back. Yeah. It says, Hey, I'm busy right now, but I'll call you back so that I can't leave a message. I'll call you back. So you can immediately hit that. You can do the same thing with emails. You can do the same thing on Facebook. So go ahead. Um, do you have Android? Okay. So you have your text ready? Yeah. But let me show you that after this. Okay. Um, because it's, it's easy to do, but it's going to be hard for me to tell you yeah, how to yeah. do it. Um, and so that's really it. So prepared replies, schedule emails and texts. Any questions? Here, here's one of Don's pet peeves. What are your ahas? <laughs> Trust me, insane. As a as a S person, that's the most hated phrase I could hear. This one. Got it caught more. Glad you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, part of it may be that I'm getting better at doing it after four times too. Oh, really? Oh, funny. Because I do not have it like written out at all. Wow. Really good. Except for our emotions. Well, that's it. Do you guys on Zoom have a good talk there? Yeah, I would I would say one of the ahas that I had is that, um, you know, I remember in the beginning, I was really trying to push for social media um, as well. And it just kind of wasn't working. And it's just nice to see that, you know, just keep posting and yep. more of the art stuff and like kind of like 90 percent personal, 10 percent business. And just um, I'm definitely going to that's a great takeaway for me that I'm going to hone in on. And I appreciate you taking the time to give us the secret sauce on that. Yep. And uh, yeah. Thanks. Good. All right. Well, if nobody has anything else, we're all done. Thank, Thank you, you very much, much Don. We really appreciate it. Yeah, that's right. We'll have a nice long weekend. <laughs> yeah, and I got my last ninja. <laughs> <laughs>